I've got a bit of a fascination with what TV Tropes calls Seinfeldian conversations. Those moments when characters talk about the most random, pointless stuff. I see it a lot in RPGs, like the skits and tales, or the chats in Persona 5. I've also spotted it in crime fiction like Black Lagoon and Pulp Fiction. These moments don't push the plot forward, but they make the characters feel real, like you're just hanging out with them. What really got me wanting to learn how to write these was Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth. There's this one party chat that stuck with me. Here, let me show you. So on the morning news, they had this segment on divination. According to that, my lucky color is pink today. Huh. Wouldn't have guessed you were into that sort of thing. I mean, I don't go out of my way to follow that stuff. But once it grabs my attention, I get a little curious. I can relate to that. Although, I don't have anything pink on today. Not even a single accessory. Guess that means I'm all out of luck. If you look in the mirror, I think you'll realize just how lucky you are. <laughs> what about the color of your hair? Um, oh, right. Something about this whole conversation made me want to figure out how to pull this off myself. So, I went deep into it, learned why they work, and just as importantly, when they shouldn't be used. Here's the deal. You don't want to drop these in critical plot moments, like emotional confrontations or action scenes, where they can dilute tension. If time is of the essence, a pointless chat will slow things down, and if the story is dragging, adding a sign building in conversation can make things worse. In darker, heavier stories, these chats can break immersion. This is a more double-edged example to note, as it's very contextual. Regardless, not every character is cut out for these. If this trope doesn't fit their personality, it'll feel forced. They can also feel like filler in tightly plotted thrillers or mysteries. But even with all these cautions, I still think this is an incredibly valuable tool. It's not about if you should use it, it's about when and why. When done right, this trope brings way more than just funny moments. These conversations create this warmth, this feeling that you're just hanging out with the characters. You're not watching them save the world, you're seeing their everyday quirks and and that's what makes them feel real. And yeah, they bring humor. It can be dry, silly, even absurd, but it's a break from the seriousness without killing the story. Sometimes, after a tense scene, you need a light banter. They're also fantastic for building intimacy between characters. You don't need deep heart-to-hearts to show closeness. Sometimes it's the way two characters banter about nothing that shows their connection. It's like those real-life friendships where you can talk about the dumbest things for hours, and it's the best. And this trope can help with pacing. These conversations give everyone, both characters and the audience, a breather at their intense moments. They don't always kill the momentum. They can give space to process the tension before diving back in. Plus, they make everything feel more relatable. Most of our daily conversations aren't life-altering. They're about random stuff like what we ate or saw online. This kind of realism grounds characters in a way that makes them feel more human. Lastly, these conversations can make high stakes moments feel more intense. When you throw in mundane chats into the middle of a tense situation, the contrast can make the stakes feel even bigger. It's like watching life go on while something huge is looming, which just makes the tension sharper. Again, this one is contextual and it depends on what emotion you wish to tap into in the moment and how you execute things. Anyway, much like me asking you to press the like button on this video if you found value in it so far, it has its time and its place. Hopefully what I have said so far can help you better navigate when and why to use it. And hopefully, what I have to say next helps you navigate the how, as I have 10 tips to consider when trying to nail this. 1. Pointless but engaging topics. Pick something completely trivial, like how to properly fold socks or whether the second stall in the bathroom is the best. The conversation doesn't need to matter. What makes it interesting is how much the characters care about it. The more ridiculous the topic, the better. 2. Exaggerated passion for mundane things. Characters should act like the smallest details are monumental. Imagine two people hotly debating whether moist or damp is the better word, with each defending their side like it's a national crisis. It's the intensity over nothing that makes it funny and engaging. 3. Unplanned topic shifts. Let the conversation wander naturally, without a clear transition. One minute they're discussing the best way to tie shoelaces. The next they're questioning whether aliens even wear shoes. It should feel like a natural yet completely random progression of thoughts. 4. Comedic Intellectualism Have the characters apply way too much logic or philosophy to their argument. 
Maybe they tried to figure out if a hot dog is a sandwich by quoting philosophers or analyzing the definition of bread. The fun comes from watching them take something ridiculous way too serious. 5. Timing and pacing. Don't rush the conversation, but don't let it drag either. Seinfeldian conversations thrive on rhythm. Let the characters bounce off of each other, but make sure the conversation keeps a certain flow so it doesn't lose energy. 6. Relatable observations. Even though the conversation is absurd, the best parts are when the audience recognize something familiar. People love these conversations because they can see the absurdity in their own routines, like debating whether to open a bag of chips from the top or the bottom. It's the small, everyday details that hook people. 7. Embed humor in dialogue. The humor doesn't need to be flashy. Keep it dry with subtle one-liners. The characters should act as if they are dead serious about the conversation, which only makes the dialogue funnier. The humor sneaks in because the characters don't realize how ridiculous they sound. 8. Use awkward moments. These conversations often happen in mundane or awkward situations, like waiting in line or being stuck in an elevator. The tension from the situation contrasts the pointlessness of the conversation, making both stand out more. 8. No need for resolution. There's no expectation of resolving anything. The conversation can just fade out or get interrupted, leaving the character's debate unfinished. This lack of resolution adds to the casual, aimless charm of the conversation. 10. Character Chemistry The best Seinfeldian conversations happen when characters have great chemistry, but also get a little irritated by each other. It's verbal sparring, where one character is always just a bit more frustrated by the other's ridiculousness, but they still enjoy the back and forth. So, that's the art of the Seinfeldian conversation. Random, pointless, but somehow deeply entertaining. If you're ready to start throwing some into your own stories, I want to hear about it. In fact, here's a challenge for you. Drop a comment below about the weirdest topic you can come up with that you'd like to see characters debating or discussing in a story. I look forward to seeing what you can cook up.